right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. we got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Thank you very much, Kim. Welcome, everybody, to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm Josh Taylor in tonight for Rich Walsh, and we've got a pretty good variety of stuff to talk about. We've got hockey, we've got Steelers, we've got college football, the Fiesta Bowl tonight, Penn State beating Washington. We've got college basketball, Pitt uh, starting their ACC schedule today against Miami, Duquesne against Dayton as well. So we've got a lot to go through with tonight's show. We will start, of course, with the Penguins. Big news of the day. Daniel Sprong has arrived with the big club. Dominic Simone was sent down to bring Sprong up. The Penguins in need of some scoring punch and Sprong, probably the guy to look for, 29 points in 28 games in the AHL. Had a hat trick last night against Hartford before he got the call coming up to Pittsburgh. So if you need scoring, now's probably the time to add that kind of guy who can bring you a good shot from the right wing and put him on this team. Something I talked about this morning on my radio show on 93.7 The Fan. I asked the question, now that you got Daniel Sprong with the big team, you, you have him when you need him, where do you put him? There's this the simple fact that he's going to have to play on a line. You imagine he's not going to be on the fourth line. You need him to score. You're going to need him to get minutes. So he's going to have to be on one of the top three lines, preferably somewhere in the top six if you want to get probably the maximum potential out of him, which means he's either going to be on Sidney Crosby's line or Evgeny Malkin's line. So that, that's something you have to try to work out to figure out. But the fact of the matter remains is they're going into their cupboard, so to speak, to try to get from their own talent pool, bringing up one of their own, to see if he can help jumpstart this lineup, which is one of the worst, by the way, in 5-on-5 five five scoring. So you need a guy like Daniel Sprong that can maybe give you some scoring punch. And if that's the case, if you put Daniel Sprong on a line, say, with Sidney Crosby, now you have a couple of lines where your right winger, who might not be the most defensively minded guy in the world, but can actually get you a goal off one shot, like Phil Kessel can do with that wrist shot. So a lot of good things have been said about Daniel Sprong's shot and how quick his release is. So now you got a couple of guys that maybe one shot with the puck can put it in the net for you get you a goal. That's a good way to balance out your top six. So that's good news for the Penguins. Steelers going into the game with the Browns tomorrow. The injury report pretty slim. One guy we already knew about, Antonio Brown with this calf injury. Marquise Pouncey has a hip injury. He's listed as questionable. But there's, other than that, there's really not much to report as far as the Steelers and injuries. They seem to be pretty healthy going into this game. And the thought of resting guys like Ben Roethlisberger, guys like uh, Le'Veon Bell, and having those two guys that are resting tomorrow, plus a healthy Antonio Brown returning, by the time you get to the AFC Divisional Playoff round in a couple weeks, that's got to be good news any way you look at it, regardless of what happens with tomorrow's game. The long-term goal is to get into the playoffs and to win a Super Bowl. You have those three guys healthy, that raises your chances significantly. So that's good news for the Steelers. As far as college basketball, Pitt opens up their ACC schedule. They lose today to Miami, 67-53. It was a game. They had a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a back and forth in the first half. Eventually, Miami pulled away. I believe they were up by 19 at halftime and finally pulled away, and they won that game by 14. But Duquesne with a big win to open up A-10 play, beating Dayton at home. Duquesne now 10-5 and five on the year. If you told me before the season that Duquesne would have 10 wins before New Year's Day, I wouldn't have believed you. I would have told you you're even crazier when it comes to Duquesne than I am, being a Duquesne alum. But you know, looking at it objectively, I would have probably hoped for 15 wins being the high watermark for the team for this season, and now they've got 10 before they even get into 2018. That's pretty impressive. Got to give a hat off to uh, Keith Dambrot and his staff doing a pretty good job over there in helping the Dukes win some games. Now, granted, it's hard to look at it without somewhat of a jaundiced eye. They have a really low ranking as far as schedule is concerned, one of the lower ranking schedules in the entire country. So it's easy to point out some of the wins may be easier to obtain for most teams. But at the same time, for this group, for this team, for this program, for what they're trying to do is a pretty impressive deal. We're taking your phone calls, 412-575-2600. On the Borders and Borders Hotline. Also taking your tweets at Josh Taylor HD. See you in a few. The Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call is brought to you by Ireland Contracting, putting new roofs on Pittsburgh homes for over 25 years. Call Ireland Contracting at 1 800 New Roofs. 